Okay, so this is going to be the first video um, of the of the series that you'll watch here on YouTube. So I'll try and create a playlist of all the separate videos that I want to put together for each chapter. I'll combine them together in a playlist for that chapter, um, so that you can watch them all together if uh, if you're so inclined and you're going to put in a longer session. Um, you could also uh, go into YouTube and just click on each individual video and watch it uh, whenever you whenever you have time. Um, so. Uh, the way I've set this up is I've tried to break everything down into little modules. So I'll take e individual concepts and try and put together shorter videos uh, as opposed to uh, a single longer video for each chapter. I think that way it gives you a chance to come and go as you please and watch smaller clips and maybe watch a concept, go practice it, come back to the video if you're not comfortable. So that's the game plan, that's the way I've designed this for now. Um, I'm going to start with chapter 3, and in chapter 3 we really skip quite a bit of what's in there, because quite a bit relates to uh, the accounting cycle and um, creating worksheets and adjusted trial balances and a whole lot of things that you guys have already done in Accounting 1004 and Accounting 1011, so I'm not, I'm not going to um, spend a lot of time chatting about that or, or reteaching you those concepts. So what we'll focus on primarily in chapter 3 is adjusting entries. Right, so if you all, if, if everyone remembers, adjusting entries are essentially journal entries uh, to record events that have occurred but haven't yet been captured in our statements. Right, um, they measure assets and liabilities, they match revenues and expenses. So their goal is is uh, or their purpose is to make sure that we um, are presenting our financials in a manner that's um, understandable and relevant and accurate for our financial statement readers, okay? Um, adjusting or journal entries are required because of accrual-based accounting, right? If we were doing cash-based accounting, uh, we would only be recording cash transactions and we'd be missing a whole lot of economic events that have occurred but haven't yet been recorded, okay? So we're gonna talk about those adjusting journal entries. Some of what we'll talk about, um, you guys will be rock stars at uh, because you've done it a couple of times over now, so uh, it shouldn't be anything new, but there's a new concept that we'll talk about, uh, and it's called the alternate method um, for dealing with adjusting entries that will be a little bit different, and you're really going to have to change your mindset as far as how you approach your adjusting entries. So obviously adjusting entries, the premise behind them is that they always affect a permanent account, meaning that you're always going to be debiting or crediting the balance sheet account. You have to, right? And you're also always going to affect a temporary account, which is an income statement account. Uh, so an example would be your prepaid insurance, right? If we need to record a small portion of that prepaid insurance as being used, we would debit insurance expense, which is the temporary account, and then we would credit prepaid insurance, which is your balance sheet and your permanent account, okay? So one thing you'll notice about adjusting entries is that we never affect the cash account. If we have to journalize or if we have to hit the, the cash account, then that's a cash transaction, it's not considered an adjustment, right? We would capture that through normal processing and potentially preparing the bank recs. It's not considered an adjusting entry, okay? Um, the two methods, like I said, there's two. One's the standard method, which is what you guys are used to, and the other is the alternate method. I'll do separate videos on each, okay? So adjusting entries, there's actually six categories that the textbook discusses uh, for adjusting entries. Uh, the first is deferred items. Right, so this is where cash is already transacted. Either we've already paid cash or cash has already been paid to us. Okay, so if we've already paid cash, those are considered prepaid expenses. So good examples would be, uh, could be things like property taxes, uh, insurance, um, anything like that where you've prepaid for a service or a good and you haven't yet received it, right? So prepaid rent, prepaid insurance. On the flip side, we could also receive cash in advance of providing a good or service, and if that happens, it's considered an unearned revenue, right? So someone pays us to um, cut their grass six times over the course of the summer. If they prepay us for those six times, we can't recognize that as revenue yet. We all know this, right? Because we haven't provided the service. So as we provide the service, we can bring a little bit of that revenue uh, into the income statement. So deferred items are, are where cash is already transacted, uh, but the good or service hasn't yet been provided. Uh, crude items, on the other hand, are the flip side. When cash hasn't uh, transacted yet, but the activity has occurred, right? So uh, when we look at accrued liabilities, this is where we've received goods or services, but we haven't yet paid for them, 
right? So we run a business, and uh, it's the winter time, and uh, we have a company that comes and shovels our driveway so that our staff can park their cars. Well, if they've provided the service and we haven't paid them yet, and it comes to month end, we need to set up an accrual to record that liability, right? Even though we may not have received an invoice yet, even though we haven't paid them yet, it's an economic activity that's occurred, and therefore we have to capture it to make sure our statements are accurate. So we would need to record an accrued liability for that snow shoveling. Now on the again on the on the flip side, we have accrued assets, and this is where essentially we've provided the good or service and haven't yet been paid. Okay, so again, the economic activity has occurred; cash just hasn't transacted yet. So we have to capture that in our statements, and the way we do that is through adjusting entries. So all this should be um, definitely review for you guys. Just kind of getting the gears turning again, getting you back into the into the accounting mode, depending on how long you've been away um, from accounting. Um, the, the next uh, four categories are are common, but not quite as common as what the, as the first two of what we looked at. The, the third category uh, is considered estimated items. And you'll see I've listed a number of things in there, depreciation, estimated warranty liability, and bad debts expense. So if you can for a second, just try and think about why depreciation and estimated warranty liability and bad debts expense, why are those considered estimated items, right? We know that we need to record them, right, because uh, our statements would be inaccurate without these adjusting entries to, re to capture these um, events. Um, but why are they estimated, right? And if you think about depreciation, well, let's just look at a simple example with straight line depreciation. What goes into your straight line depreciation calculation? You've got the cost of the asset, the residual value, and the useful life. Well, there's three components that go into the depreciation calculation, and only one of those is certainty, the cost. You know exactly what you paid for it. But the estimated useful life is estimated. Right? You have no idea whether it's, you think it's going to last 10, but you don't know. It might last 12, it might last 6, who knows. right? And the residual value, again, we're estimating what we think we might get for the asset when we sell it. 10 years down the road, okay? So that's what makes depreciation an estimated, um, uh, an estimated item. Estimated warranty liabilities, again, when we sell a washer and dryer um, and there's a warranty attached to it, we don't know exactly what the warranty expense will be for that washer and dryer, each individual washer and dryer. So we have to estimate it. We estimate it based on empirical or historical evidence, right? What we've noticed in the past with this type of washing machine or this type of dryer, right? So we estimate it. Uh, the reason we have to estimate it, again, think about, think about the matching principle, right? We generated a revenue in 2011 or 2012 or whatever year. We generated a revenue from the sale of the washer and dryer. Well, the warranty expense is, is, is the expense that offsets that revenue. So for the matching principle and keeping revenues and expenses in the same period, we need to estimate our liability expense and set it up. So again, that's why it's an estimate. We don't know what it's going to be, but we do have to record it. And obviously, bad debts expense. We don't know exactly who's not going to pay us, but we still have to estimate it. Okay. Other things you might be exposed to are inventory adjustments, income tax expense uh, entries, and then corrections of prior period errors. But again, these are all just adjusting entries. There's nothing um, super scary uh, that's really part of this chapter. Uh, the start of this semester, you'll find, has a lot of review content. So the first test has a lot of review content. So it, it, uh, it makes sense um, to really, really study hard and, and really kind of get the gears going again and get back into it quickly because the first test is a really good way to set yourself up for the rest of the semester. Okay. So um, that's it for the start for adjusting entries. Uh, the next few videos in the playlist will walk you through the rest of the chapter. So uh, if you have any concerns about what we just went over, you can message me, you can go back, and you can um, watch this presentation again. What I would recommend is now going to your checklist or going to your weekly schedule and pulling out all the different questions that you should be doing for adjusting entries and maybe trying a few that relate to these basic concepts.